bringing you the latest news from Bucks County, this is the Courier Times Update with Rachel Cannell. This Courier Times Update is brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center in Langhorne, PA. It's your health. Expect more. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rachel Canelli reporting from the Courier Times newsroom with your news update for Monday, April 22nd. Four Bucks County firefighters are recovering today after being injured in two separate fires on Sunday. In Warminster, two firefighters from Hartsville and Warminster Fire Companies suffered minor burns in a house fire late Sunday afternoon on Cheryl Drive. The home was heavily damaged in the fire and intense heat from the blaze melted the siding of the house next door. No one was home when the blaze started. Officials say it began in an electrical appliance on the back deck of the home and then a barbecue grill propane tank exploded and fire spread to the house. In Hilltown, two firefighters were overcome by heat when fire damaged 23 units at a self-storage business on Route 313. They were taken to the hospital, treated and released. The fire had spread through one of the buildings at 313 self-storage. Smoke was billowing from a number of units and tanker trucks had to be brought in from multiple Bucks companies to shuttle water from a quarry road hydrant to the fire scene. The Bucks County Fire Marshal is investigating that fire. Reporter Bill Devlin has more details on both both of those stories at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. There have been seven pedestrians killed by trains in Bucks and Eastern Montgomery County since the beginning of this year. In a story online, our public safety team takes a look at what can be done to keep people safe and away from the tracks with the use of signs or fences. There is also an interview with Langhorne resident Richard Hutchinson, who talks about the day his 16-year-old grandson Trevor Newman was struck and killed. Then Chamonix High School student had been crossing the tracks New Year's Day to meet his best friend for a snack at a nearby fast food restaurant. Restaurant. I said Trevor left about 20 minutes ago to meet his buddy up at Burger King and they kept coming and the oldest boy he said Mr. Hutchinson um, we think Trevor got hit by a train and uh, <laughs> um, I lost my grandson but I miss him I just miss him so that's when he tooted his horn that that probably may have been when he did it for Trevor. These local accidents have prompted SEPTA to step up its educational safety blitzes. Hundreds of employees will be out at train stations May 1st to talk to customers and deliver warning messages. Reporters Lori Mason Schrader, Matt Coughlin, Joe Chevalier, and photographer Bill Frazier had that story online. For our Bucks County weather, the sun is shining, but it's a bit chilly and breezy outside today with a high near 58. Tonight will be mostly cloudy with a low around 42. Tomorrow will be a similar story, so make sure you grab a jacket or sweater before heading out the door. Tuesday will be sunny with a high around 58. When we come back, video reporter Chuck Thomas will be stopping by to talk about catching his dinner. You won't want to miss it. Emergencies can be frightening. But now, there's a whole new way to treat them, fast. St. Mary's Emergency Department is designed to treat in minutes, not hours. Immediate assessment, smarter, faster flow, care that comes to you. Experts in heart, stroke, trauma, orthopedics, and pediatrics. The speed emergencies need. St. Mary Medical Center, it's your health. Expect more. Visit stmaryhealthcare.org. Chuck Thomas from our food show Eat This is here in the newsroom to tell us about this week's segment in which he actually had to work pretty hard to get his meal. Thanks for coming in, Chuck. So this week's episode focuses on a dish that's a tradition at an upcoming event. Yes, Rachel. With the 32nd annual Shad Fest coming up this weekend in Lambertville, I thought I'd take you to a local restaurant that has delicious ways of preparing shad fillets and roe. <laughs> both Delaware River delicacies. Mm, sounds good. All right, well, let's take a look at this week's Eat This. Fishing is all about patience. Um, I don't always have the best patience. Outside, come on. Come on. Let's eat. So our fishing adventure is over on the Delaware River, and now we're here on the banks of the DNR Canal in Lambertville, New Jersey, home to Hamilton's Grill Room. Executive Chef Mark Miller is going to show us two different ways to prepare this American shad, something that a lot of people have never tried, 
and might be missing out on something special. We have some uh, Delaware River Shad Roe and the Shad Filet itself today which we're going to be preparing. I'm going to saute the roe uh, in a little uh, seasoned flour and I'm going to grill the Shad Filet itself as the Shad Roe is too delicate to do on the grill. Delicious, delicious. You can see Chuck's food show Eat This every Monday at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. In high school sports, Neshaminy softball team beat rival Pensbury over the weekend to take over first place in the Suburban One League. But the game ended on a frightening note. Our very own Jen Wielgus was there as a right center field collision left Neshaminy senior Molly Garrigan motionless in the field for a few minutes. I kind of saw them like collide. I saw Kenzie catch the ball and roll this way and Molly just rolled this way and I guess she rolled on her collarbone. We think it might be her collarbone. And what a bittersweet like victory because one hand we be Pensbury, but on the other hand, we got a teammate hurt, but we have faith that she'll be back. Molly's a big part of our team. Everyone's a big part of our team. Anybody that gets injured. So for our right fielder senior to get injured makes us want to just say, hey, let's just hit the ball for Molly now. Let's just start winning everything for the one who can't be there on the field for us. Garrigan was eventually able to talk to her teammates and walk off the field. You can see that full story on our website. In other high school softball news, Jen also has a story about how it's not easy being Central Buck South, the defending state champions. The Titans held off SOL rival CB East over the weekend to move into a tie for first place in the league with Hapro Horsham. It's everyone's World Series to come out and play us and, you know, not to say, you know, like, no one else has that kind of game, but especially with being the reigning state champions, you know, we have to kind of live up to that title, no matter who we lost or no matter who we still have in the, on the team. So it's just a matter of, you know, like coming in and, you know, keeping that intensity up and keeping that tradition of winning. For every team that beats us, it's like beating the state champions. We're not the team we were last year. We've had to work a lot harder. New people and younger experience, like people filling in new positions, and it's just, it's nice to still be strong. Both teams are 6-1 and one in league play, but the Titans beat the Hatters in the year's first meeting. You can find Jen's local high school sports coverage online. Now here's a look at what we're working on in the newsroom. The trial is set to begin today for an alleged pimp accused in a human trafficking case. Court reporter Lori Mason Schrader will be there covering. Lori will also be in court for a pre-trial hearing that's scheduled today in a long-delayed case of a Falls woman who was allegedly kidnapped and murdered, but her body was never found. And finally, a coalition of more than 40 environmental organizations and individuals are rallying at regional DEP offices asking the department to stop fracking. Reporter Margaret Gibbons and photographer Rick Kinsel will be at a protest in Norristown. Keep checking BucksCountyCourierTimes.com for all of these stories and, of course, updates on your latest local news. I'm Rachel Kennelly. Thanks for watching and have a great Monday, everybody.